I think the main difference is that Fenrisic 2 has a, for me personally, a little bit more of a spiritual vibe as well. Um, it turns from a very progressive metal, like a really progressive metal record, into something that you wouldn't really expect from the ocean um, in terms of musical choices and uh, the way the songs are written and structured. With part two, I did not want to get too attached to my own ideas of how I wanted certain things to sound. And I wanted to bring in Jens Borgren's talent and capabilities for that as well. And that's why I refused to do um, very detailed pre-productions as I had done for part one and decided to leave a lot up to the last moment in during the mix, basically. And um, I think that was a really interesting way of approaching things. While listening to that record, uh, I often get the impression of seeing the the growth that we went to went through as musicians as well. Um, not just in terms of how we write songs and how we play together, but also in how we uh, grew as people and what we allow in a musical context to happen. I tend to really work everything out in great detail and then sometimes you get too attached to your own ideas and it's really good to have someone external come in at one point who has this bird's eye perspective on things and uh, you know sees things in a different light simply because he hasn't really heard the songs before and he hasn't played them and rehearsed them and and um, then that person if you trust him <laughs> which is very important can give very very uh, important and interesting input and uh, this is what we did this time uh, with regards to both uh, choices of certain sounds and approaches to certain songs and parts and also with the whole um, song order and like uh, you know like timeline of the record that all came together very late much later than for a record like Pelagial or Phenerozoic One uh, where everything was kind of like set from the very beginning of not even recording but like you know doing pre-productions one of the great challenges with making this record was um, gluing it all together the very different song material that also was written during different times and by different people on this record also paul contributed um, two and a half tracks <laughs> that he initially wrote while all the tracks on Fenrozoic were basically my uh, compositions. Most people just join a band, they want to want to show off, they want to they want to play everything they learn in their musical lessons, you know, and bring everything to the table all the time. And then at some point you realize it's not really always necessary, you know, you don't have to you don't have to always play sweepings, you don't have to always play blast beats, you don't have to always play as fast as possible. Let the song speak for itself and listen to the other musicians and try finding a musical language that translates to the outside world in a communicative way rather than forcing them to listen to you jerking off. And there are very different songs from really heavy tunes to very almost electronic um, thinned out tunes. and. Um, Getting that all together within the frame of one record was definitely a challenge, but a really interesting one and one that I love to take up and um, I'm very happy with how it all turned out. Um, the other great challenge was time. <laughs> um, we recorded drums together for both records in Iceland at the beginning of 2018. We then focused on finishing the first part, which we released at the end of 2018. And the idea was to then go back to finishing the second part sometime during the year 2019. But we were on tour for almost the whole year. So at one point we just had to deal with the situation, which uh, meant we had to continue recording on tour. And I remember we finished recording bass on the tour we did with Leprous uh, last November, December. For me personally, I got kind of detached of the recording process because I thought, okay, I'm done with drums. This is it. I can just lean back and uh, see everyone else do their thing. But of course, that's not how it works because uh, yeah, it, it's a band. Yeah, scheduling the recordings in to our touring schedule, our heavy touring schedule on the first part was definitely um, a challenge. Out! 
Fenrozoic 2 continues obviously where Fenrozoic 1 left off. The first uh, part of Fenrozoic was subtitled Paleozoic, and this is the Mesozoic and Cenozoic, which are the next two consecutive eras in Earth's history. The artwork of Fenrozoic 2 was again done by Martin Quamme, who has done all of our album artworks since Fluxion Aeolian. It shows two celest celestial bodies on collision course, which is obviously referring to the topic of what happened at the end of the Mesozoic when an asteroid of almost 10 kilometers diameter hit Earth and literally wiped out um, again 90% of life on Earth. Um, this theme is going throughout the artwork and also a lot of the lyrics on the record transfer to the human level and making reference to Lars von Trier's Melancholia movie. And um, Martin and me came up with the idea to um, work with, uh, yeah, this, this topic of two celestial bodies, basically, which are essentially just two circles, a larger and a smaller one, um, seen through circular shape cuts in the packaging of uh, the vinyl and the CD. Um, the artwork obviously makes reference to Precambrian, uh, in that we also used uh, shape cuts as kind of like a window to peek into another prehistoric time. Um, in the case of Precambrian, you saw lava through these kind of like bubble-shaped uh, die cuts. Now it, with Fenerozoic 1, it was lush green vegetation, making reference to the evolution and diversification of plant life in the early Paleozoic. And in the case of uh, Fenrozoic 2, it's the two celestial bodies on collision course, referring to um, the KT extinction event, which, uh, as a matter of fact, ended the Mesozoic and uh, inaugurated the Cenozoic area, era. For the new clips, we are, Loic and me and the rest of the band, we're not going to be present. This is all going to be Crack's work. He's going to film um, Pleistocene in Budapest, where he's currently stuck. And um, Oligocene, the other clip, will be constructed from footage we filmed on tour last year in Armenia at an abandoned observatory for cosmic particles from Soviet times, which we came across by accident in the Armenian mountains. And uh, Loic, David and me gathered a lot of footage there not really knowing what we would do with it at one point. So after that tour, we sent it all to Crack and uh, he was happy to, to use it and uh, turn it into another film. 2020 was a bit of a shitty year, I think for pretty much everyone, <laughs> ourselves included. But we decided to re release this record now in September regardless because we feel it's the right time to do it. The record is ready. Um, we want people to hear it. The big joy of being in a band is also being on tour and sharing your creations with someone and uh, seeing how they react and how they interact with you as a band in a, in a live scenario. We do have a European tour booked for January and February with an amazing package. Uh, PG Lost as direct support and Svalbard as openers. It's gonna be a long run, which will take us pretty much all across Europe. So we're super stoked to get out on the road again after this year of uh, life in Ursha. <laughs> and um, we just hope it will go forward. I guess nobody can say that right now with certainty, but uh, that's the plan for now anyways. We were also supposed to tour the US in August. That also got canceled. And um, I hope that this tour will also be happening in 2021. And this is about as far ahead as our planning is right now. Um, all we can say for sure is that as soon as it will be possible to, to, to tour again, we will bring you this record wherever you are. Uh, make no mistake about that. We are just a 